Well, good morning, Monday morning tea time with Mick. I hope your week's off to a great start. I love this area that I typically use my tea time for. This is our prayer chapel at KCC. I love the cross behind me. It is the center of the room. It's a reminder of what's most important to each and every one of us. Well, we believe in God's word. We believe it has encouragement for you and I. And today I want to encourage you by telling you a story from Luke chapter 19, verses 11 to 27. People were wondering whether or not Jesus' teaching about the kingdom was a physical kingdom that was now upon us. And he shared this story to show that the kingdom has not arrived yet fully in the reality that they understood. It arrived spiritually in the hearts of men and women, but not fully yet. And he shared that story about a king that went away and gave 10 of his servants 10 pounds of silver. And he said to them, invest this. And when I come back, I will check on what you have done with them. And upon his return, he engages three of the ten that the story tells. And one invested the money and was able to um, produce 100% more. The second, 50%. And the third, zero, and didn't invest at all. Well, what we see from the story is that Jesus was very excited about the one that did 100% and said, 10 cities going to be in charge of you because you have proven you're all in. You are all in. A second person, he was like, mm, you did okay, but you're going, you've only given 50%, so you'll be in charge of five cities. To the third servant, he said, you are a wicked man because you did not at least put my money into a bank in which you could use and get interest for me. And he was fearful of that man. And the third servant said, maybe uh, if I did this, you would have been more mad at me. So I hid it by myself. But my question to you is this. When we look at these three um, servants, which one, is, which one reflects our life? Are we like the, the, the servant that's 100% in? Meaning, I'm giving him everything. We call that radical. We call that somebody that's a Jesus freak. To, totally all about Jesus. And then what happens is that Jesus then blesses us in more ways than we could ever imagine. Kingdom people understand this. And even in their struggle, they truly have that perspective. Or are we like the second servant? servant where we give 50%. Now, 50% is good depending on what you're thinking about. An investment, 50% is good. 50% as it relates to an, a taken exam is not good. Jesus declares that you are only going to get reward for what you have done. So he's given five cities. But the problem with the second servant is that he's just doing the minimum. He's playing it safe. He's doing part of the things he needs to do. He's only doing what's asked of him, and he will never experience what it means to be fully all the way in. I believe in America, the church is full of this type of a servant where in one day we're all, we'll serve Jesus and one day we'll serve ourselves and one day we'll serve Jesus and one day we'll serve ourselves. We're back and forth. Uh, my, my response to the second servant is this. He's either Lord of all or he's not Lord at all. Now, the third servant is very clear. He is all about himself. It's about himself. And the reason why, in my opinion, that he did not put the money at least in the bank, that maybe, just maybe, he was hoping against hope that the king would never return. And if he did it, then he could keep the money for himself. But if he put it in the bank, then it would all be made public. So how many of us, we use our time and our talent and our treasure thinking it is ours, and we're thinking that the king is never coming back because it's all about us. We may even use Christianity for our own self-gain. This person is condemned at the very end because it's always been about themselves. And so I ask you today, uh, which one represents your life? And my prayer is that just as it, as it is for mine, that we will be the one that is all in 100 percent and in the middle of our struggles and in the middle of our pain, that God will reward us. And, he, and we will understand, lastly, that the present sufferings are not worth comparing to all that he will grant us. That's what he's saying to you and I today. So let's be all in and invest with everything God has given us, with our time, with our talent, and with our treasure. And we'll watch God do incredible things for kingdom-minded folks. Because he loves you. He always has, and he always will. He goes before you and behind you, and absolutely nothing can take you out of his hand. I pray you have a blessed week. And to this truth I say, all right, and amen. <laughs>